entrance to heaven, and there was so much glory at that entrance, and he was flipping them, turning them around, so I can see how highly decorated the wedding rings are. So we are looking at what is the message he was speaking to the church. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. In Zechariah chapter 3, he is talking about the wedding gown. You see that as long as Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes, then Satan was able to stand near him on his right hand side by the way to accuse him. What does that mean? Let me translate that to you. To claim right over Joshua. To claim historic right as it is in this man's mind. We have been doing things with him in the world there. As in illegal right. This man belongs to me. He has my identity. Look at the clothes he wears. He claims all kinds of rights on Joshua before the Lord. As long as Joshua is wearing filthy clothes. But immediately, the angel of the Lord commands, and the filthy clothes are removed, and the rich garment is placed on Joshua. Never again do you hear that the accuser was still standing there. The accuser ceases to accuse Joshua. In other words, he sees that Joshua has taken up another identity. He cannot even recognize him anymore. So he cannot claim rights over Joshua anymore. So in other words, the father is saying to the church, the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Eloheinu, Jehovah Adonai, he is telling the church, look, you have been purchased by the blood of Jesus and he has already placed a glorious rich garment that he bought at a high price on you. You don't have any identity of the devil anymore. You belong to the kingdom of God. What are you doing still looking for items and elements that make you wear the identity of the enemy? Hallelujah. What are you still doing out there? Compromising with the devil. Look, now you have stained the wedding gown and he is busy claiming right over you. That's what the Lord is telling the church. You were purchased already. Christ through his blood placed a rich garment on you when you repented. What are you still doing out there with so many stains, doing things with the devil that makes him put marks on you that are synonymous with his name, that mark you for him, and yet you were purchased at a price, very high price. The Son of God died for you. In other words, the Lord is telling the church, please wake up to your true identity. The prophetic time has arrived. You belong to the kingdom of God, you have inheritance in the kingdom of God. If you will go by my will and my requirements and keep my decrees and my laws, I will give you right of citizenship, right of inheritance here, even right of governorship. So you can govern the courts, the house of the Lord, even rule with Christ for a thousand years. Isn't that what the Bible says? Hallelujah. What a tremendous time the church has entered into. Finally, the revelation has been released. And that's why the Bible said, the Lord said, and the truth shall set them free. This is the freedom to the church. This is the turning point to the church. Listen to this. The Lord is saying, keep your wedding gown spotless. For as long as there is a spot from the devil, sexual sin, lying, false prophecy, whatever it is, the devil will always claim right over the church. So by placing the wedding rings in the sky, the Lord was waking the church up. He said, look, where is your gown? Look, I don't see you. Look, the devil is claiming right over you. And yet, time has come for you to inherit the kingdom for which you were created. Through the wedding rings, you inherit the kingdom of God. What a tremendous revelation. Hallelujah. 
Let us continue, viewers. This is absolutely mighty. I want to continue looking at the gown, the wedding gown. Tremendous, tremendous on the gown. The purification and the wedding gown. Let us turn now the following scripture. And viewers, even as we continue in this revelation, it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you a lot of things that you need as a person on a personal basis to download from your life so you go through the spiritual purification. Hallelujah. Let us look at the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 22. Still looking at the wedding gown, the importance of the wedding gown. Matthew 22. What is the message the Lord is giving to the church regarding the wedding gown when he placed the wedding rings in the sky? Listen to what he says in Matthew 22. Jesus was giving a parable here in Matthew chapter 22. Hallelujah. Verses 1 on. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He was talking about the rapture. We know that the kingdom of heaven that is the kingdom of our Lord. And the king is the father of Christ, our father in heaven, preparing a wedding for his son. He is the only one that knows the day of the wedding. So that means he's talking about the day of the rapture. Verse 3 says, He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused. Those who are invited, that is the church. The banquet is for the church, but they refused. That means the church is living through the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, where in the last days people will be lovers of pleasure, lovers of, of, of money, lovers of self, boastful and all these things. Lovers of a form of godliness but lacking the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And the church refused, you see that? Unreceptive the word. And he says, Then he sent some of the more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that have prepared my dinner, my oxen and, and fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. That is the wedding of the Lamb. But they paid no attention. Some went, one went to his field, another one to his business. Verse 8. Then he said to the same to three servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those are invited. Now listen to that very well. Those are invited did not deserve to come. Which means it's talking out of desperation. Did not deserve. That's judgment. Go into the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find by those who are ready. Meaning that there are some people in the streets who will be in wedding gowns. So the servants went into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled. That's the place... They stayed before the wedding. The wedding banquet took place. But verse 11 is so important for you. He says, But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told his attendants, Tie his hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. What a mighty revelation, precious viewers. You begin to understand very clearly that the wedding gown is actually central to the wedding of the Lamb of God. That means the holiness of the church is central to the wedding of the Lamb of God. Why is it central? Because Christ the Messiah, the chief bridegroom himself, he is holy. And because there is equal yoking in this wedding, the bride has also to be holy. But what amazes me here, he develops a standard here based on the wedding gown. He says, However much you refuse the message of repentance and to prepare for the wedding that is being announced, the wedding rings are already in the sky, but without